test. All right, if you're just tuning in, we're just going to um, um, just wait a little bit just so, like, uh, more people can kind of get in. Um, I was just testing the audio. Hopefully, you guys can hear me and everything, and hopefully you can hear um, the music as well. Let me know if you guys can hear that. But I think everything is cool. I actually had to switch over to a different computer, but... I did upgrade the uh, the webcam, so we have a little bit of a better f picture for this. But we'll start here in like maybe like five five minutes or so. I'm just waiting for uh, people to come in. Hopefully it's loud enough for you guys to hear that. Let me just check the settings real quick. I think we should be good. We'll start it in like a minute, six, ten. We'll just get into it. Um, like I said, I've been trying to do this uh, a lot more, doing the Facebook uh, live streams. I try to do a, I try to set it up for YouTube, but yeah, I need like a, like a webcaster and like a different encoding and stuff. It just seemed like more, like a big headache, I'm trying to set it up. And then I, uh, um, I checked. Uh, well, on Facebook, I can just go live. I don't need anything special, which is a lot better. But yeah, thanks again for tuning in, um, wherever you guys are at in the world. Uh, it's uh, 6 p.m. here in uh, on the West Coast of California. But we'll go ahead and get into it right now. Um, if you guys can't uh, stick around for the whole stream, I'll make sure to download the video and then uh, upload it on um on my facebook page it'll just automatically be uploaded and then i'll upload it to my youtube channel as well if you if um you guys can't stay for the whole stream and then you can kind of skip through what you need to skip through for this uh um for this uh first one or i mean for the second stream i'm just gonna go ahead and just make something kind of kind of from scratch i kind of was er already messing with something before i started the stream um and then we're using Ableton Live. Um, it's what I've been using for a long time. And then uh, I think in later maybe streams, I want to kind of use different software, even hardware. Um, it's just for these first like couple, two or three streams, I kind of wanted to just get into it. It's something or get into using Ableton because it's what I've been using. I'm very comfortable using it. So um, getting through everything will be a little bit more um, there's really no time constraints or anything because I want to kind of keep the streams down to like an hour. I think that's a, a decent attention span for everybody. Uh, and then I lose my attention span like after an hour or two. So, but yeah, uh, we'll get into like different software, uh, in later streams. I'm, I've been using Personas, uh, studio one as of lately, and I've been using logic as well. Um, I, I don't use fruity loops. Sorry guys. So I can't get, get into that. And then maybe reason, we can kind of do something with reason as well. Uh, and then maybe just touch upon Pro Tools. I haven't really been touching Pro Tools too often, but uh, I've been kind of in the, uh, in the not market, but I've been kind of in uh, debating on kind of flip-flopping through uh, DAWs. 
So right now, Ableton and Personas uh, Studio One is kind of like what I've been using lately. But yeah, sorry for the long introduction. Let's go ahead and get into it. Um, so here's the sample that I was kind of uh, messing around with before I started the stream, just for time's sake. Uh, let's see if we can play it. I just kind of want to play it through the chops because it is like a, it is, it's not original or, you know, I don't want to get caught up on like sample clearance when it comes to YouTube. I know YouTube is really like assholes about that. So let's go ahead. Okay. Oops, that's the drums. So here's like the sample basically chopped up. I chopped it up via um, Ableton and I use uh, Simpler to chop everything up and kind of lay everything out where I wanted it to. So here's basically the the chops that I can kind of came up with. I came with like two different like um, like loop ch chop loops, I guess. So this is the first one. So it goes. Hold on, kind of messed up something here. No, I didn't. Yeah, that's like the first one. And then I kind of mess around with this area over here. It's, it's kind of later in the, uh, a little bit later in the song. So that's kind of like the first chop was kind of like, I guess, the chorus or the bridge area. And then this, the second chop is kind of like a little bit more toned down. So it, it can be worked as like the verse kind of part. But yeah, um, I basically recorded all the chops and just kind of touched it up a little bit. So here's the first, um, I guess, chop loop. But let me know if like you guys can hear it, like if it's too low or if it's too um, too loud. Maybe my uh, microphone is just too loud. And then to add on uh, the the first part of that, um, uh, I just added some vocal stabs in there. is the second part. So 
So the first chop and then the second chop and then some vocal stabs or whatever. Uh, that's kind of like where I began and then we start the stream now. So from here on out, here on out, it's all like, um, I'm just going to wing it for the most part. Um, I did load some drums up. Um, what I've been doing a lot lately is, uh, purchasing sample packs and because there's a lot of cool and dope producers that are putting sample packs together. I mean, people have been doing it for years. Producers have been doing it for years. But just as of recently, for some odd reason, I've been just purchasing a grip of them. And uh, they've they've come out with some really dope ones, I have to say. Um, uh, I don't know any offhand. Uh, I've, been, I've been working with Loop Masters, so they kind of hooked me up with a, a few sample packs. But I've, I've been liking a lot of, like, drum sample packs. Um, but this is like one of them, basically. So. so I've been... So here are like basically the drums. So that's kind of what I'm going to play around with as like the skeleton, and then we'll build off from there. So let's play that first loop. And just play around with it. Oops. Let's just we'll go ahead and record something, and then we'll kind of adjust everything that we need to via MIDI. Okay. Let's see what we like from that. I kind of like the second half of what I was playing on that one. So we're just basically going in and then just kind of reconfiguring all the, the MIDI notes just so let's see, see if it works out. I just want to uh, move all these. Boom, boom, boom. Let's move that over a little bit.
Okay. Um, I just want to add a little bit of reverb to the drums. Okay, let's see what it sounds like for that second chop area. I might want to redo that. Let's just see what with the drums. Because sometimes like when you're uh, messing around with the drums, with a different kind of chop it'll sound it won't sound as cohesive as like the first chop so you just have to like redo it maybe that's why Just have to re-record it. I think I messed up on that second half of that. Yeah, just kind of just shake everything. Over. Okay, and it sounds kind of like the sample chops are so like small that um, y y you kind of have like that dead space between the chops. So we're going to kind of maybe add a little reverb so it doesn't sound as like abrupt, like the chain or the stoppage of uh, each of the, the chops um, doesn't sound like like so stiff. <laughs> Okay, sorry, I just kind of like get into it. Uh, let's go ahead and build more on the drums. Um, let's use that first part just to kind of build off of. So I'm gonna go ahead and use the drum pad right here. I don't know if you, can, you can't even see it. Maybe I can uh, just point the camera down a little bit so you can kind of see see my beautiful legs and my, my chanelas. Okay. Uh, so I'm going to use a VST on this. I use uh, Addictive Drums. I use this VST a lot. I've been using it for years upon years. Um, and uh, I mainly use it for hi-hats, but uh, as of recently, I've been using it for a lot of other things. So I want the, the hi-hats kind of big. Let me just change something on here. I'm going to go ahead and just turn off the mic real quick so you don't hear me slapping it.
Okay, so I was just going through a bunch of different like uh, hi hat sounds. So I'm just going to record this one I kind of like, and then we'll finish the mixing. I'm going to mute the mic again. I do a different hi hat for that section. Just let me see what it sounds like. Yeah, I'm gonna record a different hi hat real quick. So that was just like a, a little bit of a variation of a, a hi-hat as compared to the first uh, recording. Save that. Um, let's go ahead and go back here so you can see my beautiful face. Um, we'll just continue to build on with the drums and then we'll make a bass line real quick. Just let me go down a little bit more. Uh, I'm doing everything in um, session mode. In session mode in Ableton because I started using the push. Usually when I use the push, I do it in session mode, and then I bring everything into arrangement mode. And then, you know, vice versa. Sometimes I'll start in arrangement mode and then work one way into session mode. Um, I don't know. Let's uh, play with some percussion stuff. This might be kind of loud for everybody, sorry. Let's go ahead and insert an audio track here. This is kind of loud, so I'm going to have to turn it down. Still kind of loud. Ow.
So we just recorded the cassaba, cabasa, cassaba. Is it? Isn't cassaba like a sausage? Um, or am I thinking of kielbasa? <laughs> I must be hungry, as always. Uh, let's go ahead and just add like some delay to this and just like really simple stuff to this. I don't like complicate my drums too much. Some reverb. Sometimes it's like it's it's uh it's sometimes it works and sometimes it doesn't where you use kind of like a shaker or a kibasa to um kind of work with hi hats like you know sometimes one will mask one more than the other but um sometimes it'll come like it'll come together pretty well uh, I'm just gonna play around with the tambourine I don't know if I'm gonna actually add it maybe just for the 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 horn parts. And then your tambourine gets stuck. Okay. That's two different tambourines here. Sorry, that's probably like super loud for everybody. Let me turn that down. I just want to hear it for the first part. Let me just copy this up and save. <laughs> plastic with the symbols and then this one's wood with the symbols so I think I'm gonna go with the wood one okay let's go down a little here and then I'm probably gonna play two different variations of this uh, one for this like chorus part and then one for the um, and uh, for the like verse area part <laughs> Playing this kind of like um, a little staggered. Uh, I don't know if you can really hear that, but it's not. It's not really on the beat. It's kind of like lazy playing, and I think it gives uh, the drums kind of a, a looser feel. A uh, looser feel. So let's go ahead and record that. play it lazy um, let's go and I'm I usually take the second half of what I played it usually sounds better <laughs> and I, what I like to do is I like to pitch some of this stuff down as we go let's hear the second part <laughs> Okay. And let's 
go ahead and pitch that down as well. So here's a, here's a little tip if you guys have tambourines. Let me just turn up my mic a little bit. If you guys have tambourines and you're kind of like just playing them one way, what's cool about it is the tambourines, you can play it any way you want to, just like a lot of percussion instruments. And here's the a couple ways that I play it. Sometimes I'll just record me just kind of like slowly like moving the tambourine just so I can get like a like a cymbal feel. And let me just turn this down. And then sometimes I'll play it... Um, in like I'll hold it different ways so let me just turn down the microphone so this first way is just like the regular way but you can see I'm kind of like holding it um, I guess so that tambourine's more vertical so when you hold it like this when you stop playing it um, the cymbals still keep moving which is kind of like a good thing see but if you want it muted so you just turn it like this on its side and then they don't, the cymbals don't move as much after you're done playing. So you can play them like a bunch of different ways. And that's my tambourine tip of the night. Good night, everyone. Thanks for tuning in. Okay, let's get back into it. Okay, so we worked on drums. I don't know. I don't know how much more I can do with those drums, but let's go ahead and uh, slap at the bass, make a little bass line. I'm just going to go ahead and use a... Disconnected? Okay. I'm going to use Logic for this because I really enjoy the Logic sounds. So like I said in like previous um, videos and posts, you can't rewire logic to reason. So what I do is you have to download, for Mac anyway, well, logic's only on Mac, but on, on um, with logic and, re, or logic and Ableton, you can't rewire. Um, you have to route the audio kind of like virtually within uh, your machine. And you have to download a like a little plugin or like a little um, program called Soundflower, and that's how you route the audio. So I have the output of the of Logic going through Soundflower, and then I have the input of Ableton going through Soundflower. So it's taking the the audio routed from Logic and putting it into Ableton. And this can be all done through like the preferences. So I'm just going to switch to Soundflower for this. And it, it routes as an audio file, like audio signal, so it's not it doesn't capture the MIDI stuff that within Ableton. So let's go ahead and see if we have uh, music here. We do. It's kind of low, but we'll just go back. But there's a there is a. Uh, I want this. There is a bass in um, in Logic that I really like using. That I think would be good for this. I think it's this one. No. I think it's this one. Let me just move this over. So it doesn't fall over. Let's put it on the back right there. 
Let's move this over here. I know you can't hear that. Just kind of turn it up. Oh, I want to EQ um, the samples real quick, just so we take out some of the low end. Not too much. I don't like completely take it out. It's a really simple kind of, um, what's it called? Baseline. Just record whatever. Do it over. Terrible, let's record it over. I want to add some stuff onto that, but... Let's see what this sounds like. Uh... Alright, let's just record something real quick.
Okay, let's uh, take some sounds from Reason as well. There's a few things I want to take from Reason. What's good about Reason is you can rewire Reason to to um, Ableton. What the hell's going on here? And there's a few like orchestral sounds that I want to take from Reason. I'm still using a very old version of Reason. I think like Reason 5 or something like that. Let me just... Uh... want to use an arpeggiator for this. Before we do that, let's um, look at some other sounds within Reason. Um, some orchestral sounds, like some strings and stuff like that. that um what's weird about this particular sound is like it doesn't go any lower than that <laughs> like this the octaves don't go any lower so I, it's just basically blank space uh so what i have to do is i have to record it at the higher octave and then pitch it down within ableton so that's why i'm i'm playing it like so high and it doesn't sound right but what's cool is you can record via you can record midi information into ableton so you can make any adjustments that you need to so let's go ahead and record that.
So what we do is we convert this MIDI information to audio information. So it's basically bouncing the sound from Reason into Ableton. We just keep it as an audio form. So we have this. So if I pitch this down a full octave, it'll sound a lot better. It sounds kind of weird, but if you stack the two on top of each other, it might sound Or maybe not. I don't know. It sounds kind of weird to me. stack some different um what's it called over that Just use the arpeggiator within uh, Ableton to do that. So let's record that. Sorry, I kind of got lost in there. <laughs> let's do it over. Let's go ahead and uh, freeze this one as well. And flatten. Okay, and one more thing, maybe, if we have time. Sorry, I'm trying to cut all these videos to, like, an hour. So, let's maybe do some horns. Okay, some horns. <laughs>
Dominik. Sounds weird. Let's do it over one more time. Okay, why I also like doing this within an hour span is so, just to kind of, um, um, just to, whoops, just to kind of, uh, challenge myself what I can do within an hour. Whoops. We'll stop it right there because I'm like super hungry. Um, so that's kind of what we've come up with or I've come up with it within an hour. Uh, big thanks to guys for tuning in. If you guys have any questions, maybe I can answer them right now. Um, let me just recap what we did. Um, I'll start with uh, the original sample chop, which was this. Then we just added some vocal stabs. Here are the drums, bare bone drums.
Tabasa. Tambourine. Baseline. And this was the second part. I don't know exactly what I'm going to do with this this uh, this part right here. I was thinking about maybe the sample chops being kind of like an intro to the rest of the song, but I'll have to see how like it lays out uh, when I get done editing and like mixing and stuff. Because I can already hear like certain things need to be mixed a little bit better. You know, like I think the the horns need to be like a wider kind of spectrum. But here's that second part of it. just isolate the sample chop for that one. Yeah, okay. Uh, big thanks again for tuning in. If you missed like the first half of this or missed any parts in the beginning, uh, it'll be reposted on my Facebook as well as my YouTube channel. You can follow it on youtube.com um, forward slash Freddy Jawakim or even here on Facebook. But I have some other videos on YouTube if you're new to, I guess, my music or um, the Facebook page. Um, I'm going to try to do this more often, like I said before. I'll try to do maybe twice a month if I have the time, twice to maybe three times a month. Uh, I just kind of do it sporadically. I don't, I don't really plan on our schedule when I'm going to do the Facebook live streams. Uh, but for the most part, I'll be using Facebook. Uh, I tried to do it on YouTube, like I said in the beginning of this, uh, this stream, but it, it was a little bit too complicated getting everything set up. So I'm going to continue to do it on Facebook because it's a lot easier. Maybe I should do Twitch. I don't know. But uh, we just got a new camera, so it looks a lot better. Um, yeah, uh, if you have again, any questions right now, I'm going to try to answer them right quick before we wrap up this stream because we're kind of like over an hour here. Uh, like I said, I've been, I want to do this for just like an hour just so I can see what I can do within that hour. Um, but yeah, it won't let me go to the very top, but... Oh, I guess we don't have any questions. Is that a thumb piano? Yeah, it's a kalimba. Um, I bought this one off of um, eBay, I think. But I use it uh, every once in a while. 
By the way, is that a ducky keyboard? No, I, it's not a ducky. It's a, it's a mechanical keyboard, but uh, it's, a, it's a magic force. It's like the short ones, and I have brown switches. I used to have blue switches, but then they got kind of annoying a little bit. So I switched to brown, and I never looked back. It's, uh, if, you, if you guys don't know about using mechanical keyboards, then you're in the, the dark, because it's probably the best keyboard you'll ever use. But uh, yeah, uh, what string noise is that one? I don't know. I don't... Sorry, I can't answer that question. And some of these are in different languages, so I don't know. I can't. Uh, what's it called? I can't uh, answer. <laughs> Sorry. Um, where did you get the Horn VSTs or VTS VSTs? Uh, I use Reason, like I said, bef um, for uh, those horns. I, I kind of overuse them, honestly. I've been trying to bounce back and forth from using Reason sounds. I need more refills. I have a bunch of refills. I just don't have the time to go through all of them. It's kind of like getting a new VST, like a synth VST, and then going through all the presets. It's like incredibly tedious and time-consuming. I think a massive is kind of like that. Um, but yeah, the Horn VST is through Reason. I'm using Reason 5 as kind of an old version of Reason, but... And then I use my Yamaha MX-49 keyboard over here for uh, sounds as well. I've been using that a lot lately. But I guess that's it. Uh, thanks again for tuning in. Uh, like I said, this video will be reposted once I uh, stop the stream. And then I'll post the video up on YouTube as well if you guys want to check it out there. Uh, I know I've been kind of lagging on the the vlogs on YouTube uh, only because I've been really busy and I think I've been kind of overthinking this new YouTube um, uh, the new YouTube upload you know I've been wanting to do something about DJing but you know I kinda go over the dialogue in my head but it just takes too damn long uh, but yeah thanks again for tuning in um, here's the track I'm gonna just leave it off on this track